Halo Infinite is the 14th game in the city. Hey, what are you playing? It's Warthog Jump. Yo, that's sick. <clears throat> Halo Infinite is the 15th game in the series, starring the guy every lady wants to be with and every guy wants to be six months after a monkey from the least played Halo game. What are you playing? It's Halo on the Atari. From one of the least played Halo games. Shows up and instantly destroys humanity's greatest ship, showing you how imposing and powerful he could be, setting up an epic story of revenge. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Uh, and then the monkey dies off screen and he's replaced with the most awkward Shakespearean crackhead you've ever seen. Is it a symbol of life or a cruel joke? Who has the complete opposite design to the boss that the intro established. So you could say 343 did something awesome and then immediately shot themselves in the foot. Keep that one in mind because I will periodically be referring back to that sentence throughout this video. Yo, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for some more and hit the like button. Both will greatly help me out. I'm just about 8k subscribers. And if you don't, I'm, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I did to this grunt to you, so. We're in range of Bip Bap the Vanquisher. Master Queef is rescued by the pilot of Pelican Echo 216, which starts the game off strongly for fans of the original as in Halo Combat Evolved, there was Pelican Echo 419, Bowhammer. We deliver. She was a recurring character throughout the story before her surprising death at the end of the game. Spoilers! Halo Infinite being a reboot of the series and having this immediate strong connection to the original games feels like the developers acknowledging the hot steaming pile of shit they made with Halo 5 and going back to the roots of Halo. Like, like right to the roots. Like the, the first fucking level. The first level of Halo Combat Evolved had these enclosed corridors and makeshift barricades and an explosive escape. Then you end up on the ring with Halo Infinite's new open world design. But it, it's not really new, is it? I've not seen anyone else talk about this, but if you count the first level of Halo Combat Evolved as a tutorial or intro to the game, then the first level of the whole series has an open world design. Once you rescue some marines and track through some Forerunner archaeology, you're left with the choice of where to go and who to save, as there are three pockets of marines spread out through Halo's terrain. You can tackle this in any order and even kill off the marines and the level still continues. This isn't super deep, but for... <coughs> and on the Xbox, that's pretty open world. Not by today's standards, but even looking at the pre-released footage of Halo Combat Evolved, you're trying to tell me this is linear game design? What the fuck is that? Where did that go? How do I get one? Halo Infinite starts off so strong with its connections to the original Halo and feels like those early levels were huge hashtag inspo for the game's design. Uh, can I get a... You'll love to see it. Warchief swims through space, receiving some encouragement from his new best friend. You have one bullet against an entire army. It's... it's a metaphor. He can reload the gas, not literally one bullet. Master Chief is the one bullet against the army. It's a, it's a metaphor, it's clever. He just reloads the gun. Master Chef punches the ship to death. Requires a hack. Okay, and you can do that. No. Clean title screen. And then along the way you meet the weapon, aka young Cortana. Zam! AKA the side chick. The weapon was made to mess up Cortana as everyone's a bit sick of Windows 11 updating every fucking minute. And at the end of Halo 5, Cortana became the super cyber space Thanos queen. And uh, finally put some clothes on? 343, you guys doing alright? When you made Halo 4? And Halo Infinite? So it's cold outside, right? It's 
The big cliffhanger of Halo 5 was the band getting back together, readying up to stop Cortana as she took the word of Kane a little bit too seriously and adopted the idea of operation. The, ideolo the, ideo the ideology of peace through power. And then she died off screen. And none of that mattered and we're left dealing with Midsummer's Night Monkey. Yeah, this guy shut the fuck up. Yes, we're 30 minutes into the game and the two big villains set up by the two previous games have been killed. Off screen. <laughs> I hope they replace them with someone cool. The fuck is he telling me this for? You taught them how to be better. Am I? Bro, we got a dip. Bro, quick! <laughs> Master Beef, the weapon, and 216 start bouncing off each other as the game gets rolling. The dynamic of these three characters was one of the best parts of Halo Infinite for me. 216 is terrified of the Banished after the fall of the Infinity and he acts on that fear, making him a coward. Even revealing that he stole the Pelican to escape and save himself. When he finds Doomslayer What If, he sees this as a sign to escape and get home. Run away from the conflict, but being with Chiefington holds him to the highest standard of military service. Queef is the best of the best, and now 216 has to fight alongside him. This is the direct opposite of what he wants, but Chief won't fail him as an act of redemption, but not beating Aatrox, saving Cortana, the other Spartan, the Infinity. He's failed at every turn, but he won't fail 216 as he dances with the conflict of the weapon's very existence and her journey of self-discovery, which continues to haunt the Chief throughout the game. Holy shit, let's go! Nice. Finally some good writing 343. These three characters bounce off each other so well and compared to the skid mark that was Halo 5. Yo Lockie, you sure we should be going up against Master Chief? I mean, he disobeyed one order and he did that recently and ended up saving humanity again. So, uh, like, I don't know, it seems a bit unreasonable that we are going to, you know, try and stop him and not just catch up, talk, see what's happening, see where his head's at. No. Uh, okay, I hope you've got a, a big plan to go against this team of elite Spartans, four elite Spartans, including literally the fastest human being alive. Magnet. What? Magnet. You're going up against a team of four with one magnet. Magnet. Hey man, aren't you like an ex- elite assassin operative surely anyone with half a brain would see that this plan is lunacy and we should at least have four magnets <laughs> magnet oh, okay then yo what the heck this guy got a magnet did he bring a magnet to a gunfight why would he bring one magnet is, is this guy all right magnet three well written characters compared to Is it fucking Game of Thrones? Halo Reach had seven characters. Halo ODST had six characters. And a space dog, like seven characters. You include the space dog. Halo 3, the climax of three games, had ten characters. And you could argue that the Grave Mind wasn't actually in the game, merely his influence was, which would make nine. Halo 5 was such a shit show. And I was so happy to see 343 get away from that and focus on three characters that bounce off and work well together. Then they added this wanker. Heart, Bro, he's out of breath, just talking smack. 343 did something awesome and then immediately shot themselves in the foot. I ain't stopping, man. Nothing can stop the, the rocket hog. The rocket, <laughs> rocket hog has been stopped. You get to swing around the world in the weirdest Spider-Man What If episode. You can assault bases, rescue marines, and take over forward operating bases that act as fast travel and resupply points. And all of this will earn you Valor, which will level up the battle pass. Because Master Chief isn't valiant enough to use the bazooka.
Around the world you'll find surprises, collectibles, <laughs> random pockets of enemies littering the countryside. The ringside? Hidden skulls, easter eggs, and a lot of really cool environmental storytelling. There's a lot to see and do if you take the time to take it all in, but the bigger objectives really suck my nutsack after a workout. You can rescue marines around the ring, but it feels like you're just going to a gunfight, winning and then ticking that off the map. The marines will follow you really well, but they can't operate on their own anymore. In older Halo games, they could path through the level, drive their own vehicle, or even be resourceful and take the enemy vehicle. But now, they're just glued to you. They could pop off if you give them power weapons, but you can't have multiple vehicles in a fight. Or take the gunner spot. You have to ferry them around and this means you lose out on those epic moments and those big battles that the older Halo games had. I understand there has to be a limitation as this is an open world game so the AI just can't run amok and run wherever it wants. It can't have complete freedom of movement or the game would fucking explode. But you could have easily had it so rescuing a squad of marines would allow you to call in their aid when you're assaulting a bigger base or objective. You could have it say you rescued Delta Squad, click them on the map, then click the big stronghold that you want to go attack and Delta Squad will meet you there and each squad you rescue could bring something different to a fight. One could have a Warthog, one could have a Rocket Hog, one could have a Scorpion Tank. There's a cult following for a bunch of wankers in cosplay, so imagine the lore and the fan base behind finding a squad of marines that's kept a tank running for the six months the Chief has been out of action. They've fought against the Banish and scrapped some of their vehicles and then scrapped it onto the Scorpion tank keeping it going. It would use that really amazing environmental storytelling that's already in the game, as well as the Banish coloured UNSC vehicles that are already in the game. Or you could just go to a gunfight, tick it off, and, and nothing happens afterwards. I suppose that's okay as well. I suppose that's pretty cool. Also not having ODSTs in the game, that's also pretty cool. By selecting a squad and then selecting where they attack, you would keep the AI in check and then still be able to have those bigger battles that were seen in the other Halo games. You can still get a big battle going with Marines if you walk up to them and get them all to follow you to a location and then save a few, but comparatively, it feels like we're losing out on those big epic fights we used to have. It feels like with 343, we just keep losing things we already had. The smarter AI, uh, we don't have co-op, we don't have forge, interesting ways to get multiplayer art. How do we keep losing things that we already had? Fucking 343. 343 did something awesome and then immediately shot themselves in the foot. We're having a little cat break here. Felix has spotted a lizard on the other side of the window and he's just, he's well spun up about it, aren't you, Felix? We, oh, can you see him? Where's Wally? Where is he? There he is, the bastard. Look at him taunting you, Felix. Can you get him, you poor thing? You're so close, Felix. Oh, Harry, do you care? Uh, Harry the <laughs> Do you care, Harry? <laughs> You're angry, <laughs> Yes, Chef beats off an elite who's way too into BDSM and goons. One of the blokes no one knows from the books. And I'm really sad and torn up about it. Quite quite messed up, really. But if you could just get out of the way, because I'm kind of looking for some skulls right now. And after some very important open world business... Oh, you get an epic boss fight, mate.
you meet disposable porta potty who gets ganked by some space goblins before going into a curved room with a bit on the side that leads into a curved room with a bit on the side that takes you down a hole into a room that is curved with a bit on the side that actually takes you into a room that is curved with a bit on the side which I really like because I hadn't been in one of those recently we get a flashback of Cortana invalidating the majority of Halo lore and a large portion of the original trilogy. Containment? The Flood? Why would I... You and I both know that there are worse things than the Flood within this ring. One single Flood Spore can destroy a species. Sergeant, we're surrounded! Were it not for the Arbiter's Council, I would have glassed your entire planet. You meet Mena from Mars who's sending me mixed signals. We are not enemies. What? But then she turns on the thingy that looks like a thingy. And at this point in the story, humanity's really good at breaking meow, thingies that look like thingies. Shut it down. Permanently. No, no, no! What are you doing? This is not acceptable. You were supposed to be friendly. This boss fight is such a cool callback to such a small portion of Halo 2, and I really appreciate that. I could really appreciate more if that wasn't the only cool thing about this boss fight. Spartan Chief jumps out of the collapsing thingy and the music roars as 216 swoops in for the catch. Such an epic cutscene. Open up. Go. Full awesome dialogue between these characters. Absolute banger. 10 out of 10. And I really wish. 343 wouldn't put the whole cutscene in trailers for the game so that when you see the cutscene, the grandeur of it is already gone. Because they show it before the game comes out instead of keeping a bit for the player to experience. I also appreciate the bold decision 343 made to uh, not animate the Pelican crash site after it's hit from two anti-air guns and they just they just lowered the model to the ground this implies that after being hit twice just it just landed perfectly detailed world building showing humanity's struggle against overwhelming odds for six months tick just tilt the object a little bit it's too much work in the man Oh, you're the you nitpick game. Blah, 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 blah. I know there's someone who's ready to send that in the comments. That's how you do it in a 3D modeling program, and that's how you do it. Literally inside Halo. Tilt the Pelican. Literally their job, and it's part of promotion material for a multi million dollar game. Just tilt the fucking thing, man. It's like. In the game to be able to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Nah, it's alright, it's alright. I'm joking, I'm joking. We got this cat, we got more of this dude afterwards, so it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> yeah, boy. I'm disappointed. Infinite goes from such low tier wonder writing and game design to where they even forget what they were meant to be doing to such S tier dialogue between 711 and Beardman. I'm worthless. You should leave me here with the rest of the carpets. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. We're just people. I'm sorry, Chief, but how have you ever failed? I should have protected Cortana. Stopped everything from going wrong. I failed her. I will not fail you. Chief. Wait. We're going to make it. I... We have to. This is all I've got. It's all we need. Our only way home is straight through the heart of 
of the banished. We need you. We can fix this. Together. Of course we can. Oh, let's go together. The boys. Yo, let's go, character development. That's the shit. That's the shit. Oh, now we're back to the worst fucking character in the game. You are losing control. Nothing is lost. Yesterday. No. It's done. Deploy your army. Descend upon him. No, odds will not break him. What did he say? He even explores what it's like to be a normal person in the Halo universe, which is such an untapped gold mine. Of course, the Flood are just nightmare fuel, let alone space monkeys. Spot your ship and then just ram it into oblivion. This scene is so astronomically good. But it comes off the back of just absolute ass. How do they make it go from one extreme to the other? Oh, yeah, I know how. 343 did something awesome and then immediately shot themselves in the foot. Uh, let's go, my virtual girlfriend. I'll never finish the campaign and then you'll never leave me. <laughs> oh, hit it with the major bag. After goosing around in the open world and uh, having some Halo 2 PTSD, Marathon tries to delete the eccentric side chick with the password red flag. <laughs> he tries to delete his girlfriend with the password red flag. Some of these jokes write themselves, man. As the weapon is hacking while being hacked, Halo finalizes the deletion protocol. Which doesn't delete her, because she has a choice over the matter? You were going to delete me. And you stopped me. What did he say? Because she was hacked, women are from Venus, starts the reformation, which is never explained, but I'm sure it's different from space annihilation. Space annihilation. Or space annihilate. Wait, no. Ooh. That was space subjugation. Landing down. Now learning that the perfect man actually sucks with the ladies as he's possibly killed his girlfriend over whether space tyranny is okay. I don't know about you guys, but uh, she tells me to stand in line. Yes, ma'am. And now he's messed it up with his side chick because killing her might not have been the move as well. <laughs> and now he's just got no bitches. <laughs> I actually really like the weapon and she shares my enthusiasm for this boss fight being repeated. Oh good. Him again. Beardman gets captured by the Spartan killer, who doesn't kill the Spartan. He's, yeah, he captures Beardman to take him to his boss because his boss wants the 1v1 XXX Demon Lord 69. But then the Spartan killer tries to kill the Spartan... Hang on. The Spartan killer captures Beardman and doesn't kill the Spartan because his boss wants to kill the Spartan. So he takes Beardman to lure the Spartan to fight his boss, but then he just tries to kill the Spartan. To save Beardman, you have to hurry up and get to him and not get distracted climbing out of the <laughs> To be fair though, it's better than listening to this guy. We get flashbacks of Cortana blowing up the Spartan training facility, of her destroying the banished homeworld, and Sydney, Australia. And as an Australian, nice shot. Fair, sh fair shout, honestly. <laughs> now we are getting into spoiler territory. Warning. Warning, the weapon finds out that she is an exact clone of Cortana. Oh, and she has a bit of a freak out finding out that she's the exact clone of someone who's willing to kill billions without a second thought. <laughs> Must be her time of the month, am I right boys?
You get a Warthog run. Well played. Before you get this awesome Dead Space style intro to a boss fight. really hope they don't give this away in the trailer for the game and I really hope that the boss is just not completely dismantled by a hole in the ground 343 some shot foot 343 really struggle with the boss fights the AI is just basic enemies with one or two more move sets and an extra health bar. <laughs> Even with an extra attack and more health, you can just run loops around them with the grapple hook and the dash. Even on higher difficulties, the AI needs to be able to react to the player hiding on top of things or just looping the grapple hook onto the roof over and over again with its extremely low cooldown. The Spartan Killer doesn't live up to his name, and we finally knock off this guy. I will crush you. The Spartan that the Spartan Killer didn't kill and Manic Monkey become best friends, and then they hug it out at the end. Alright, um, let's do the Harbinger, Chef's actual best friend. Along the way, Aatrox and Cortana are seen hanging out, which is probably the most awkward hangout you could go to. Aatrox is like, I suplexed your boy out into space, and this upsets the unstoppable Space Queen, who had been stopped, so she has a tanty and destroys the ring, and stops the weapon's deletion, switching up faster than Andrew Garfield haters after watching No Way Home. Sorry if that's a spoiler. The Harbinger waffles on in a boss fight that doesn't actually suck. Cortana shows up, looking like she did in Halo Combat Evolved, representing that she's not evil anymore. She apologises to her boyfriend, not for the genocide of billions, but that they didn't do it together. I was wrong. I thought that I could do this on my own. The real message behind Halo is that love triumphs overall. <laughs> so Cortana, who's dead, is also a, a dead robot ghost was, a, was the strongest being in the galaxy, had a final act of defiance to save her favourite Spartan after she killed a bunch of other Spartans to save her favourite, she then saved her favourite Spartan because a monkey annoyed her, <laughs> because a monkey annoyed her. After she Destroyed his own will with no it. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the dead monkey was alive the whole time. <laughs> Jeez. What was the game about? <laughs> Played the whole game to confirm Cortana was dead. She died off screen. We didn't even. <laughs> He's alive. Why didn't we just fight him? <laughs> Prior to that, the trio reunite after the couple, who now have Cortana's blessing, uh, do a light bit of time trap. Chief, a light bit of time travel. Better question is when are we? I don't know how, but we've been gone for days. <laughs> the three rally together aboard 216's Pelican, and we finally learn his name. Esparza, Fernando Esparza. Master Beef refers to him as Soldier, a sign of respect, knowing that he was an engineer at the start of this adventure. And the story ends with the weapon choosing her own name. Again, these three characters are so good, but then 343 try to juggle all these moving parts and other characters, 
and it all falls apart. The gameplay is really solid at its core and feels great to play. But then they start expanding out the open world with these mindless objectives and level design and it really hurts the core experience. The multiplayer is such solid gameplay and does such an amazing job of mixing PC and console together that it's taken the internet by storm. But then you look at the aspects attached to it. The lack of forge, the terrible game mode selection that's even messed with players ranked experience. They forgot to make a report button in a in a free to play game. Because free to play games never have hackers in <laughs> them. Yeah, she'll be right, mate. Clip it and ship it. And the worst customization and progression system the series has seen. The core of Halo Infinite is really good. And for someone who wasn't looking forward to it, I'm pleasantly surprised. And I'm hopeful for the future of the series. If there's one thing that we could take away from Halo Infinite, the good and the bad, is 100% irrefutable evidence that Cortana was naked the whole time. Thank you for watching. Oh my god, look at him, he's wicked. Oh, uh, David Attenborough here in the wild. Uh, outskirts of the ring, we find the the pinky pinkus borosus the the wiggle waggle in his native habitat looking to find a new snack for some bitches on the <laughs> on the prowl he's got the strut that's how you know he's an alpha alpha of his breed of the what do they call him the pinkus borus yo don't go off the cliff man what are you doing oh my Go on, don't. Oh! Did you guys just see him go down? Oh my god!